while we're waiting for uh, a few more people to arrive. Uh, welcome to the uh, NX Security Week. And um, for those of you that missed the last couple of days, um, we did some really good presentations with our partners, Vivotech and uh, WSM. Vivotech gave us a really good insight into uh, how cameras work, um, where's the best place to use specific types of cameras and what their downfalls and advantages are. And also kind of talked around the future trends in terms of security and AI and camera. It was a really good, uh, on really good webinar. Um, and then uh, <laughs> WSM did a full uh, talk about hardware and how to design a hardware solution for an environment. You should see use in your RAM. Um, the best way to, to basically create custom hardware architectures to, to fit basically the system. Uh, so again, a really good one. So these will all be online. Um, so if you did miss them, feel free to jump on our YouTube. We'll have a whole section uh, around the NX Security Week uh, and they can be used for references if you have new employees starting or want people to have a scratch up on uh, these details, then they, they can just jump on and watch them anytime. And it's a pretty good transfer. Um, on that note, uh, we'll we'll get started, um, and a few more people I'm sure will jump on as we get into it. Um, so the NX Security Week, uh, for those of you that don't know, it's all around um, kind of the educational side of security, less around pushing product. Uh, we want to try and uh, just refresh everybody while we're all stuck in quarantine on the, the kind of technology that's around and uh, where the future trends are going, um, especially as we haven't been able to go to expos, um, go to like lecture or the seminar sections within. Um, the expo. So this is kind of trying to create, I guess, what we would what we would see for those. Um, so on that note, a little bit about network optics. If you're if you're coming from a non-network optics uh, customer, uh, we are a video powered um, platform, and the idea is that we take video streams, we manage them, we control them, and make it a lot easier and simpler for people to to kind of access their their, their IP account. Um, our kind of flagship product, NX Witness VMS, is a security VMS system um, with three main core principles. Um, the first one being making things a lot simpler, a lot easier to use. Um, you know, a lot of the systems uh, back when we first started in 2012 ish uh, were kind of quite complex. Only kind of really a uh, professional IT user was able to kind of use these systems. We've kind of designed it with new UX designers to retain a full feature set, but make it a lot more kind of consumer driven in how it's used mm. to just jump on and use it straight away. Um, our second kind of core principle is the uh, the lightweight and the speed of the system. You know, we want to be able to install on anything, ARM devices, Linux, Windows, OS X, uh, anything, and then be also be able to transfer that data to you um, on any device in a very quick way. So we use things like adaptive scaling to to make it a lot faster for streaming video from the other side of the world, drop out for lags. Um, and then our last core principle is uh, what we say extensibility. So uh, with the shift of the way the technology went, where uh, or the security industry went, where there's a lot more technology involved in it now, um, people were a lot more uh, customized security solutions rather than just the, here's a box, it records devices. And now people actually want to get pretty custom, bringing in lots of IoT devices or um, or AI systems and how their story strategies are. It's a lot different, a lot more custom. So our system is very extensible and allows you to pretty much uh, mold the platform to, to suit your needs. So on that note, uh, today we're going to be talking about um, strategic approach to surveillance storage, uh, which I think is really important. It is probably one of the most common questions we get asked as a VMS provider is, um, is how to calculate storage. What's the best storage solutions? Um, so I think this is going to be a really beneficial one, uh, especially down the line. We can point for, you can point your customers to this video if they're asking you about it as well. Um, this will be online for everyone. So we have Seagate and Steve Jones, um, who is the business development manager for um, the surveillance segment at EMEA. Um, and we've been working together for quite a while now. So um, he's uh, very knowledgeable and also from the security industry before he went over to Seagate. So he gets both sides. Um, so a pretty good uh, knowledge set that he has. So I'll hand it over to you, Steve. And uh, anyone who has questions, please feel free to ask away as we uh, as we go along. Yeah, thanks very much. Cheers, James. Can you hear me okay? Yep, perfect. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you. And good afternoon, everybody. 
Yeah, so welcome. Um, so as James said, I'm Steve Jones. I'm Business Development Manager. Uh, I cover the EMEA region and um, only work with inside the video surveillance segment. And as James said, um, my background is, is video surveillance. Moved to Seagate just under four years ago. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've been in the video surveillance market now for uh, just over just over 30 years. So, uh, yeah, showing showing my age. Um, Today I'm going to cover. I'm going to give you a quick introduction about Seagate. I'm going to make. I'm going to try and make it as as non-producty as as possible. Really want to sort of cover, you know, the uh, the, the technology, um, the options as far as storage architecture, um, you know, some of the some of the do's and don'ts, where the technology is going, uh, some of the trends that are driving that 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 technology, and what's really driving uh, data, data growth. Um, and specifically on data growth, we'll obviously be covering, covering uh, you know, video surveillance and uh, another, you know, similar similar market segments. But just to give you a, a brief introduction to to Seagate, um, so companies, you know, over forty years uh, um, in the making. Um, we're we're you know very uh, concentrated and very focused on on data and uh, and data solutions. Um, our revenue is uh, is just over ten billion dollars a year. We employ forty thousand employees uh, globally, and we ship. Um, well, last year we shipped uh, just over four hundred and forty exabytes of, uh, of 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 data or, or storage technology. Now, when we look at the uh, the global footprint and and our comp our, comp our competitors and other storage manufacturers. That equates to over fifty percent of the uh, of the global demand. So you know we're one of the uh, the real market leaders with inside um, the the video data and uh, you know data storage industry as a as a whole. Just to give some history, um, this photograph on the left hand side um, was actually taken in nineteen fifty six. It actually features an IBM three hundred and fifty hard drive being loaded onto a plane. And this, uh, this monster of a computer um, actually had 3.75 megabytes of, uh, of storage. Um, it weighed more than 2,000 pounds. Um, you could rent it on a monthly basis for $3,200. And in today's money, that was about $27,000. So um, you know, when you look at you know, today's hard drives, we've just launched our 18 terabyte drive. You know, 18 terabytes in a single drive, three and a half inch platform is is just incredible. How we've uh, how we've sort of developed the the technology over the uh, over the over the years. 1980, Seagate introduced um, the ST506 hard drive. This was the first hard drive developed for for microcomputers. Uh, 1992, we actually were the we were the first to market with a um, a, a 7,200 revolution per minute um, hard drive. Which was the 2.1 gigabyte Barracuda. Probably 12, 13 years ago, um, we actually launched our first uh, video optimized uh, hard drive. And back in 2017, we were the first hard drive manufacturer to launch um, a, a video AI optimized drive. And this was really in line with a lot of the big vendors in the industry bringing out, you know, embedded MBRs with. Uh, very advanced video analytics, uh, AI capability, and also and also deep learning. Um, you know, video uh, very write intensive, and when you start to uh, implement AI and, and deep learning, you know the characteristics of the data slightly changes. So this was a, an optimized uh, drive specifically uh, for uh, video. Uh, with AI and, and deep learning applications. So just giving you really a, a very brief history of where hard drives really started, um, where they are today, and hopefully the next slide will give you a bit of a flavor of where we're, where we're heading next. This typical technology has really come, I wouldn't say it's end of life, but it's come to, um, it's come to a, like a crossroads where you know, we need to innovate and bring out new technology that's going to drive you know, tomorrow tomorrow's demand and, uh, and higher capacity. And the platform that we've invested in for now over well over 10, 12 years is a technology called Hammer. 
Um, so over the next few months, Seagate will actually be launching Hammer to Market. Um, we believe it's the future of high capacity hard drives. Um, this will deliver massive increase in aerial density, which effectively means that we'll be able to provide capacity points 20, 30, 40, 50 plus terabytes and above over the, uh, over the next few years. Um, taken into consideration, it's eight, 18 TB is really the maximum in a hard drive today. You know, to have 50 plus terabytes potential over the next few years is obviously uh, is obviously massive growth. So just to explain Hammer very briefly, I'm um, I'm not that technical on this side. There is a lot of information on our website. If anybody's interested in this Hammer technology, it is literally space age technology. It's incredible. Anybody who's interested in this technology, please uh, put in Hammer, uh, go onto our website and uh, there's quite a bit of information you know available um, but basically hammer is a, a technology that was designed to enable um, the next big increase in the amount of data that can be stored on a uh, on a hard drive uh, it uses a, a slightly uh, different kind of media magnetic technology on each of the discs and it allows the data bits or grains to become smaller or more densely packed um, while remaining magnetically stable. Um, the way we do that is we introduce a small laser diode, which you see on that uh, image or that picture on the right hand side. Um, and basically this enables the, um, uh, the, 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 um, the laser to actually heat up the tiny spots on the disc, which allows us to basically flip the magnetic property of each bit enabling data to be written so effectively if we can cram more grains of data into a, a very small area on our drive a we increase the aerial density and b subsequent subsequently we increase the overall capacity of of the drives so again this is technology that's been in in development now for for 12 years and um, over the next few months that we, you'll see the first hammer drives actually going out into the uh, into the market um, they're also enterprise class, so uh, you won't be seeing these in like standard NVRs, but for enterprise class environments and enterprise class applications, Hammer is going to be really, uh, you know, a, a future uh, technology that's going to be adopted by, you know, the big uh, providers, technology houses and, and cloud service providers. Just to give you a flavor of um, Seagate's portfolio, um, Again, I don't really want to make this sort of, you know, product centric, but just to give you an overview of where we really uh, position ourselves with inside the video surveillance market is we, we know video surveillance market is very complex. It's very fragmented. There's a lot of technology, a lot of vendors, big ecosystem and so on. And the important message here is that we actually do a suite of products, device and solution and systems that addresses various segments of the market. So whether you're looking for an optimized, you know, video hard drive for an NVR, or whether you're looking for uh, an enterprise product or an SSD product for an enterprise appliance, or you're looking for a scalable total solution, uh, Seagate has a full portfolio that addresses various segments of the uh, of this growing and demanding market. I put this slide up because quite recently um, Seagate have started to, uh, well, C Seagate is changing. It's probably the best way to put it. Um, most, uh, most people, most companies would associate Seagate as a device provider. Um, we really want to pivot and really move away uh, from device and really be known as a, as a solutions provider. Um, and for over 30 years now, we've actually been providing this systems portfolio that you see here on, on screen. We've been providing this systems portfolio uh, through many of the global uh, storage OEMs for, well, for, for over 30 years. We've got over a million systems out, out in the field. So lots of enterprises who are using, you know, these types of OEM solutions. Um, there's a good chance that these are actually being powered by Seagate, but just hidden behind behind another brand. We'll actually be touching on some of these products a bit bit later on as we start to talk about more advanced uh, network architecture and storage architecture, 
uh, JBOD and, and SAN. Um, and this is really where these these uh, products are really well positioned and also add a lot of value with inside, you know, uh, scalable, uh, future proofed video surveillance solutions. Um, just keeping on this topic of solutions provider, and again, um, you know, these solutions have been out in the field now for over 30 years. Um, we actually supply these solutions into, uh, you know, the, the top five uh, global OEMs. Um, so some of the largest OEMs, the largest cloud service providers or hyperscalers, and also uh, some of the new uh, upcoming technology companies um, that are really aligned to technologies like autonomous vehicles, telco, media and entertainment space, and, and, and so on. Um, so again, a, a really good pedigree. And now these solutions are going to be uh, available and, and also very well positioned for the, for the video surveillance market. Um, Seagate's also, you know, we, we also um, sort of value the fact that we're quite a, a, a thought leader uh, with inside the, 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 the data industry. Um, I just want to explain that quite recently uh, we released a, um, a rethink data report. Uh, this was based on a survey of over five, sorry, of over 1500 global enterprise leaders. Uh, the report was commissioned by Seagate. It was conducted by research firm IDC and basically identifies today's most pressing data management challenges and some of the solutions that, um, that basically address them particular challenges. And also a few weeks ago, Seagate hosted a virtual event, which also focused on this Rethink Data report. Uh, we had many partners to that event. Uh, the event is available on demand. You can see all the information on this screen, but if you go onto our Seagate website, you'll see it, you'll see all that information. And also Network Optics were actually invited and were one of the participants and speakers at that particular event. So uh, they added quite a lot of value. And there's also a very specific section within inside that on-demand event, which also talks about um, you know, video surveillance and uh, you know, some of the challenges and some of the solutions that can be, uh, that can be adopted. So please feel free to, um, to hunt that information down. Um, going back to an IDC report a few years ago, again, this was sponsored by Seagate. This was a, a, an IDC report called Data Age 2025 quite an important slide this because what it really shows is the explosion of uh, data being created in what we call the, um, the data sphere. And this report actually looked at some of the trends, some of the market segments, which were basically driving this particular growth. So the, um, the expectation is that by uh, uh, calendar year 2025, um, the world is going to be creating about 175 zettabytes of data. Now, just to put that into context, we had this discussion earlier on about what is a zettabyte. Um, so just keeping it very simple, um, a thousand exabytes equals a zettabyte and a thousand petabytes equals an exabyte. So it is just an astonishing amount of data. Um, and also um, the recent report, the Rethink Data report, um, actually stated that 2019, the world was, or the data sphere was creating about 45 zettabytes. And again, that will increase to about 175 zettabytes by 2025. The image on the right hand side just shows you that, you know, the amount of storage that could be potentially stored, sorry, the amount of data that could be potentially stored compared to the actual amount of data that will actually be stored. And the point of this slide is that, you know, data is becoming more valuable, you know, um, and especially in video surveillance, you know, years ago, gone are the days where, you know, video is just recorded, placed on, you know, some form of, uh, of media. And then after a particular number of days, it's just, it's just overwritten and deleted. Um, you know, video surveillance um, is just different now, especially with the adoption of AI and deep learning, you know, uh, the, the value of that, of that data and analyzing that data and actually getting business insights out of that data is, uh, is going to be one of them real key drivers. So again, anybody who's interested in these reports, please visit the, uh, the seagate.com website and uh, all the information's there and uh, the white papers and uh, data reports are available for download. So uh, please visit the site. 
So let's just move on to um, a bit more uh, information and specifics on video surveillance. I'm going to just talk a bit on devices, um, just to give you um, uh, my viewpoint really of why it's so important to choose the right device for the right application. And when we talk about video surveillance, you know, you see some of these um, uh, pointers on, on the left hand side, right storage for right application, make sure that, you know, we're meeting workload requirements, future proof technology, scalable data protection, less maintenance and, and, and so on. And I think one of the most relevant pieces of this is meeting workloads. Now, what does workloads mean? So what I've done, I've basically taken a, a standard specification. Uh, I just put in, um, I put into a, an online calculator, uh, the following specification. So I use 32 cameras, uh, two megapixels, 15 frames a second, H.264 compression, 50% uh, recording for 30 days. Now that specification basically throws out a yearly workload requirement of approximately 119 terabytes. Now, the reason why that's important is we do see a lot of the industry, especially with, you know, standalone NVRs and DVRs and small appliances. Uh, and I appreciate these are more sort of entry level. Um, we do see a lot of these appliances used uh, in combination with what we would class as desktop drives. A typical desktop drive that you'll find in your, you know, PC um, or your laptop typically has a workload rating of approximately 60 terabytes per year. Um, a, a standard video surveillance drive typically has somewhere between 150 to 180 terabytes per year. Um, and on this standard uh, configuration, you can see, you know, trying to find the right drive and the right performance for that particular workload, especially in a right intensive application like video surveillance is, uh, is obviously a key, uh, is, a, is obviously a key requirement. Um, so moving on to, you know, uh, the video surveillance or video surveillance optimized uh, product category with inside Seagate, just to look at comparisons. We have two products. We have Skyhawk and Skyhawk AI. Uh, Skyhawk is up to eight terabytes. Skyhawk AI is eight to 18 TB. And you'll see on the Skyhawk range, we actually have a standard um, workload rating of, 100 ter sorry, of 180 terabytes per year, which typically is about three times the workload of a standard desktop drive. Um, Skyhawk AI actually provides 550 terabytes per year, just because of the increased workloads of AI and the metadata. And again, that is approximately three times the workload of a, of a standard surveillance drive. So I just wanted to highlight, you know, the, the fact that we, you know, the reason why the industry and us and, our, and, and the competition, the reason why the industry has video optimized drives is for a particular reason, is because it's a very intensive application. Um, it requires a lot of workload. You need high performance drives and you need video optimized drives to deliver the right performance, the right reliability for them types of, um, you, know, um, you know, near enterprise class sort of requirements. When we start to look at uh, larger architecture, um, and I suppose this is really where network optics and, uh, you know, VMS platforms really, really come into play. The architecture just starts to become a bit more, uh, a bit more complex, um, and we start to use the terminology enterprise class. So, a uh, we see more complexity, uh, and also designing the right solution is critical for performance, security, uh, scalability, and also data protection. Um, I've split um, sort of. You know what what we would view as a, a simplistic approach or a sim or a simplistic view to uh, to scale a win inside the video surveillance market. So traditionally, at Seagate we see that small business market, which is typically standalone DVR or NVR, uh, fulfilling uh, systems below sixty four cameras. Uh, we see the commercial market, which is which is typically a combination of you know NVR. VMS appliance or VMS and server with shared storage uh, below 500 cameras. And then anything above 500 cameras, potentially up to thousands of cameras, we definitely see as the enterprise market, 
uh, which typically we see, you know, VMS platforms um, like Network Optics together with multiple recording servers and uh, shared external storage um, or, or SAN, which we're going to cover in a, in a little more, a little more detail. So I think it goes without saying, you know, every video surveillance system really needs efficient, reliable data storage. Um, although it's typically one of the um, key technologies that is sometimes very much overlooked. Um, now that's not to say that every video system requires large scale shared network storage. Um, and we know that, you know, there's, there's many high performance video appliances and MVRs that often adequately support, you know, many small to mid-sized video surveillance environments. Um, but when installations where, um, you know, you need to, to really start to scale, you need more flexibility, you need uh, a lot of protection, you know, a storage area network or SAN really provides an opportunity um, to, to deliver a, a more enterprise class solution. Um, now, typically enterprise class surveillance environments utilize large numbers of high resolution cameras, uh, typically to extended uh, video retention times, um, often 30, 90 days. We know in the Middle East, um, you know, it's not, it's not unheard of to have, you know, demands for three, six, 12 months of, of uh, storage retention. Uh, and therefore, storage solutions um, need to be more robust, they need to be ex expandable. Um, and they deliver more than what traditional MVRs really can, uh, you know, can provide. Um, so SAN typically presents itself as a, a real optimal alternative. Um, now, typically there's a certain point where enterprise surveillance deployment, sorry, there's a particular point in an enterprise surveillance deployments growth where the capabilities and cost effectiveness of a, of a typical MVR solution is just simply exceeded. Um, SANS offer a more robust architecture. They have the ability to scale over time. Um, and it also makes um, you know, a real good fit for security applications that need room to expand as businesses grow and also as camera technologies um, evolve. It also enables uh, enterprise level security deployments to integrate multiple recording appliances or NVRs into one shared storage network. Uh, we also use um, iSCSI or fiber channel uh, connectivity through a, a dedicated network switch. Um, and also by using a SAN, all servers connect, can connect uh, to the storage network as a shared resource. And this specifically guarantees speed, uh, efficiency, and uh, simplified data management. A few points here, so scale as you need, expand with additional HDDs or expansion chassis. Um, again, one of the, you know, the key differentiators within, uh, you know, network attached sort of SAN storage. Also, uh, there is no single point of failure. So storage is separate to the server or the compute and is shared. So, and it also has advanced data protection. Uh, we also provide high performance and, and the ability to stream thousands of HD cameras which typically on, um, you know, distributed server storage platforms, um, that's, that's a big challenge. Uh, and also, and this is only really applicable as systems start to scale. So this is really um, aimed at, you know, enterprise class solutions. We also deliver or have the ability to, to deliver lowest uh, total cost of ownership or, um, you know, lowest dollar per, per terabyte solutions. So let me just talk a bit about um, our solutions and some of our, our, our technology. Um, so again, we have a range of uh, JBODs, uh, modular storage enclosures, hybrid arrays, and mass capacity storage platforms uh, available under the Seagate brand. Uh, we're also uh, vertically integrated. So all the technology, the hardware, the software, the controllers, the input output modules, everything, all the engineering and the product is all from Seagate. We don't use any third party uh, supply. Um, 
and to our knowledge, we're, we're the only manufacturer of these types of high density storage solutions uh, that has that that vertical integration. So, uh, so really, really key to delivering, you know, high class, uh, scalable solutions, um, specifically for the for the video surveillance market. We adopt um, a modular design. So, basically, you choose your storage device, choose your chassis, uh, control the module, and basically you're you're ready to go. So, devices on the left hand side, so they can be a combination of enterprise drives and SSD. The chassis uh, you see here, various ranges and flavors of chassis, anything from a 2U12 up to a 4U106. So the 106 basically is 106 drives. So just as, as, as an example, that 4U106 with 16 TB drives equates to about 1.7 petabytes in a, in a single enclosure. So as you can see, you've got mass scalability with inside even single enclosures. Um, the 5U84, again, as a, as a, a typical example, um, that is 1.3 petabytes in a single enclosure. Uh, with three expansion enclosures, that equates to about 5.3 petabytes as a, as a full SAN solution. So you can see you, you, can, really, you can really scale. Uh, the controller modules, um, so on the SAN, um, the data protection module is provided and you actually get dual redundant um, controllers. Uh, they're actually active-active, um, but because they're enterprise class, you know, they've got that high availability. So uh, two are, are installed um, to basically provide you with that um, added redundancy within, within, inside, uh, within inside the system. The IOM module, uh, which is just an uh, input output module, uh, that's for the JBOD. And then we also have uh, an AP or compute uh, x86 controller module for our application blades as well. Just touching on the controller, um, we have just um, huge amounts of uh, throughput performance on, on our controller. Um, you'll see a, an example that we've actually done a test quite recently with, with Network Optics at our Singapore lab, and you'll see a separate slide on, on, on this. But just looking at the 4005 controller, uh, just to pick out a couple, a couple, of, a couple of pointers. Um, a, we can actually support up to 336 drives on that single controller. The sequential write performance of that controller, and this isn't just marketing terms, this has actually been proven. You know, customers actually fed this information back to us. So sequential write performance is approximately 5.5 gigabytes per second, uh, which typically in video surveillance terms equates to, to thousands of cameras. The test we did with Network Optics, uh, we actually tested over a thousand um, 4K cameras um, and I think we were using less than 30% utilization of the, um, of the actual RAID controller. So very high performance units. Um, connectivity, uh, again, fiber channel or iSCSI. We actually provide eight ports uh, and you can actually configure the ports and have a combination of four iSCSI and four fiber channel. All depends on, on, on the environment and the, actual, uh, and the actual application. So again, you've got this modular design, um, massive performance, um, you know, um, large connectivity uh, via iSCSI or, or fiber channel. Um, and, and if required, you've got the ability to add uh, additional expansion bods on, onto these units. So you can add four, sorry, you can add three expansion bods onto a 5U84 and you can add, I think, up to nine expansion bods onto the, onto the 2U12 SAN as well. So again, providing massive flexibility for, uh, for system growth. Some of our USP, so this is really our competitive edge in the market. We try to keep it really, really um, uh, simple. Um, so we've come up with this marketing term safe. So safe, basically S for streaming, A for adapt, F for first to market and E for, for encryption. Um, so on the streaming side, we have got a, um, a unique feature called real stream. And real stream basically is designed to dramatically increase throughput of bandwidth intensive applications. Um, using real-time uh, automatic predictive load ba balancing, RealStream manages simultaneous ingest streams benefiting enterprise class video surveillance application performance. Um, on the ADAPT technology, um, ADAPT is basically a dispersed parity that distributes uh, data across uh, every drive in the pool. 
Um, it's self-healing. Um, it reduces support calls. Uh, the bigger, the better. So the bigger the array, the more powerful it is because the fact that it's, uh, it's erasure coding, we actually distribute the data across all the drives. So the more drives you get, the more efficient ADAPT is. Now, what ADAPT basically delivers compared to traditional RAID, RAID 5 and RAID 6, is we can actually improve the rebuild time of drives, individual drives or multiple drives, up to uh, uh, about 95% faster than traditional RAID 5 and RAID 6, um, which obviously has massive improvements, especially taking into consideration the expectation that drive capacity is going to be, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 terabytes in the future. You know, that's a big issue within video surveillance at the moment is, is RAID and rebuilding on RAID when you have a, 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 um, a faulty drive or potentially faulty dr or, or multiple faulty drives within, within inside a storage array. The first to market is the fact that because we're vertically integrated, any new product, any new feature that we release obviously comes directly into our branded solution first before it goes out to, uh, to OEM or partner. Um, so we can actually release first to market uh, product, first to market um, feature set directly integrated into our solutions. And the encryption is we have um, a whole suite of what we class as uh, Seagate secure uh, encryption technology. Um, now that encryption technology um, basically is supported on our Exos and Nitro range. So it's both the enterprise HDD and SSD range. We provide um, self-encrypting drives that protect data at rest. Uh, they reduce IT drive retirement costs. Um, and the, the way we do that is we have a feature called instant secure arrays. Now, instant secure arrays renders all data on the hard drive unreadable in less than a second via a cryptographic arrays on the data encryption key. Now, I've seen, um, you know, different ways in which the industry uh, approaches, um, you know, disposal or retirement of hard drives. You know, I've seen engineers with drills, drilling holes in them. I've seen machines at security exhibitions that where HDDs go through a crushing machine and come out as little bits of metal on, on the other side. But with this, um, with this type of technology, if you've got a self-encrypting drive from Seagate and it's embedded into one of our solutions or controlled even by a third-party vendor, Instant Secure Erase gives you that ability to effectively erase all the data in less than a second. So uh, really applicable for the, for the video surveillance market. We all talk about video at rest or, or data at rest and how you retire you know, data, especially with um, you know, the governance uh, and compliance requirements in, in, different, different parts of the, uh, in different parts of the world. Just gonna move on here, James. I think James can come in and um, maybe add a bit more meat to the bone, but quite recently, uh, we worked very closely with Network, went network Optics to test and validate uh, our some of our solutions um, that could help scale video storage and ensure critical data being protected. Um, and what we really wanted to achieve together was to enable our customers su to support more cameras, um, more recording. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we could offer uh, customers to store more, uh, protect their data, and also uh, achieve uh, lowest total cost of ownership. Um, James, I don't know if you want to come in and just explain the architecture. I think we used a couple of uh, physical servers with yep. 10 virtual machines. Is that correct? Yeah, so we um, we basically set up, obviously, as, as you said, in the Singapore lab with our team out there. Yep. Um, and so the, the infrastructure was we had the two Dell servers, um, but one of the Dell servers was actually only used as a, a streaming service. Um, because obviously, we didn't have access to a thousand cameras, so we basically used that to stream video files as a camera. So effectively, we had one Dell server um, with NX Witness installed in 10 uh, VMs uh, to give us uh, the capacity for the thousand cameras. So we had uh, 10 VMs, 100 cameras on each VM, um, and each one of those VMs was recording directly to uh, a single Seagate uh, storage. Um, so it wasn't, there was no local storage, it was 
live storage directly to the Seagate array. Um, as I said, we had 100 cameras. Uh, we started off actually doing 1080p at 30 frames per second. Um, I just double checked the calculations while I was uh, while Steve was talking, and uh, we were pushing uh, 72,000 kilobytes a second, um, which is roughly uh, 700 uh, megabytes, I believe, uh, or something around there. My my calculations might be off. Uh, yeah, 0 <laughs> 0.7 gigabytes, <laughs> um, okay. and that was per uh, that was per virtual machine. Um, so basically, all up, it was 10 times 0 0.7. Um, uh, so we uh, we were pushing a lot of data basically to the system, and the 1080 cameras, as Steve said, weren't even barely registering. Um, so then we upped it to the 4K, uh, and that's where uh, that's where we kind of that was that was the threshold right, basically where we still managed to achieve it without any frame loss. And so a thousand 4K cameras uh, at 30 frames per second. So pretty good uh, result considering it was all run on one Dell server and one CK storage. Pretty, uh, pretty powerful. Pretty powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fact we did it, I think we actually did it on the single on the single unit as well. So it was a single five U eighty four with a with a dual with a dual controller in in the back. Yeah. And also, I mean, I know we're not going to discuss this today, James, but um, I know we've got on there, you know, on on the what it means the the private cloud. You know, I really feel that sometime in the future that these larger systems really are going to have the opportunity or the ability depending on obviously connectivity and, and data migration or, or data movement, we've got really got the ability to move some of this data in, into the cloud. Mm -hmm. I know the video surveillance market has been talking about it for, for some time. You know, I've been to many seminars over the years uh, with some of the big global, you know, leaders in video surveillance and, um, you know, everybody's talking about platforms. We're talking about cloud. We're talking about video as a service. And I think that is really going to, that's really going to, come into our um, industry over the over the next few years it's quite interesting actually the the data the data report um, I haven't read all of it it's too long but I've read I've read part of it but you know the amount of enterprises and companies that are migrating to cloud you know most businesses have made that migration so a lot of their business applications are actually hosted in in cloud whether that's private whether it's hybrid whether it's public um you know and video will only it just needs time um but it will it will definitely start to to migrate and maybe it's going to be a hybrid approach where you know we're going to see some recording on the site and then depending on analysis or tiering some of that data is going to be replicated and basically thrown and stored and analyzed up, up in up in a cloud environment so um yeah which is which is great because you know something else to something else to uh, to concentrate on and i think you know when that cloud type of facility really comes into video surveillance applications uh, you know there's going to be um, real opportunities uh, for you know partners and systems integrators to to really leverage that yeah for sure um yeah. like like we discussed before in the last call um the uh, the hybrid model kind of makes the most sense at the moment just uh, purely because of network infrastructure trying to get the yeah. data to the cloud so just minimal kind of uh, lightweight appliances on site with minimal kind of hard drives and storage capacities, at least for 24 hours, and then everything else gets pushed centrally um, to a cloud. And it's just much better for, for, you know, system costs, like we're talking about the total cost of ownership. And yeah. then your data retention as well, basically. You can run, um, obviously, your RAID on your large system rather than having multiple different storage devices each RAIDed. So, um, yeah, definitely the way that we'll go. And we can touch on it more if anyone's got any questions at the end. Um, feel free to ask us about the SAS kind of side of things as well. It's something that Steve and I have been working on a lot. Over there. So uh, definitely exciting days to come. Absolutely. Thanks, James. <laughs> so last slide. I just wanted to really sort of highlight what, what we've been through on the, the network attached storage and, 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 and the SAN, and what it really sort of delivers to the video surveillance market. And again, you know, we're not trying to say that this this is a broad stroke approach. It doesn't suit every single application, but definitely as systems start to move into that type of enterprise class, you know, um, multiple hundreds of cameras, if not thousands of cameras, high availability, uh, maybe the introduction of AI and, and deep learning, uh, longer retention times, um, you know, highly secure, um, 
you know, we, we really sort of want to hit home on the fact that we deliver, you know, simplicity. Um, we've got a modular design. We've got uh, management, which is done via a, a, web, a web-based GUI. Uh, we also provide probably some of the highest performance on the market, as I stated before, you know, sequential throughput for video up to 5.5 gigabits, sorry, gigabytes per second sequential write on our standard um, 4005 RAID controller. Uh, scalability, you know, not just our solutions, but many other solutions out there, you know, SAN in general just provides you with that scalability to deliver multiple petabytes on, uh, on, a, shared, uh, on a shared network or shared infrastructure. Um, it also provides you know, various levels of, uh, of security. I've mentioned our Seagate Secure feature set. Typically, this, this feature set is only found on enterprise class solutions. And M enterprise class solutions and enterprise class devices are only typically found in these types of network attached or, or SAN type of um, you know, storage architecture. And stability. And stability typically in this world, in the enterprise wor- world, really means always on or we're always available. Uh, which is uh, which is really uh, which is really key, um, and typically that's one I suppose that's one of the the key criteria for for enterprise class is that we provide that stability, security, scalability, and and high performance uh, for our um, you know, network attached scalable solutions. Um, so with that, that um, that closes my presentation. Hopefully, that's been. Um, informative and hopefully it's given you maybe something new to think about from uh, from a from a seagate perspective and uh, i think we're going to move into a q and a Q&A session are we now james yeah yeah for sure no I, as i said i thought uh, it's a really good presentation um i really like learning about the hammer stuff um i think it's uh it's going to be pretty cool when the hammer um uh, drives first get released i think it's going to be a big shift in the market right um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it works really well with our stuff as well because we don't require um, like high uh, hardware requirements in terms of CPUs and processors and everything. So if we can get uh, more storage compacted in there, we can create quite uh, some quite cool appliance-based stuff that has a lot of storage. Based yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, our our industry is typically driven via the big cloud service providers and, and data centers, and it's all about you know the the foot the footprint. Exactly. Um, yeah, so if you can get if you can, if you can pack as much, you know, storage inside a, a small three and a half inch platform, um, great. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. Hammers... We get, we we run uh, like we can do 128 cameras up until that four i three because we just don't need that much, uh, that much power. So we don't need these easy processes. Uh, therefore, the the main thing for us is obviously being able to fit the storage in. So if we can now go lightweight machines. Uh, a small footprint with massive hammer drives in it. So yeah. it kind of opens up the market differently where we don't need the 12 pay servers. And then obviously it can all be pushed back to central storage down the line as well. Yeah. So yeah. pretty good. Uh, one question that came in was um, so you said the first hammer drive is going to be released soon. Um, what's the size of the first hammer drive? If we're allowed to know that. Yeah. Um, no. Um, Hammer's going to be yeah. Hammer's going to be available very soon, and it's going to be very soon. I don't have a date. Um, I don't have a capacity point, um, but it's going to be considerably higher than what, what we've currently got. Okay, so, cool. That's all I can say, unfortunately. Yeah, that's fair just, enough. It just, just on just on Hammer as well. I think one of the um, one of the questions we we've been asked before, not on on this uh, on this on this presentation, or not not on your event, but you mm-hmm. know, there's always a balance in you know, as you increase capacity, um, the, the it has an impact on performance. Um, so, what we've done, I mean, and this doesn't really run in parallel with 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 Hammer, um, but it maybe can be seen that it can be running in parallel with with Hammer. We have a technology again; it's widely available on on our website. Um, lots of information on the internet about this, but we have a technology called Mac Two. And what Mac 2 delivers is uh, when you open up a hard drive, basically you've got a single actuator and on that actuator, you've got all your, all your heads and all the heads basically cross the, the spinning platters and basically write all the data. And what we've introduced with Mac 2 is basically two actuators. So the actuators work independently of each other. 
And what that basically delivers is times two performance. So as the capacity increases on our drives, um, Mac 2 basically addresses the, the performance side. So you can actually get two times performance because we've got two independent actuators working completely independently of each other. So they're quite interesting. Yeah. No. So you're going to do the Mac 2 in combination with Hammer or? No, I think Mac 2 will actually launch before. Mac 2, I think, is going to be launched over the next couple of months um, on, on our enterprise class drives. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so a question that came in as well. Uh, so for the Hammer drives, and I guess also for the Mac 2 would probably be similar. Um, so with all these kind of like the drives getting more data, in, um, it, are the power requirements going up for all the hard drives? Are they starting to consume more power in general? Uh, that's obviously a consideration, uh, probably not a question for me, but all I do know is that they've been designed, they've been designed in such a way that they, we class them as plug and play. Um, so you, you should be able to take a hammer drive and plug it into an existing piece of hardware um, without, you know, without any, uh, you know, performance lag um, or, you know, so it's, it's a plug and play device. So yeah. there should be no overhead as far as, um, you know, uh, performance or, or power or, you know, but yeah, it's a, it's a plug and play, plug and play unit. It's just the technology that there resides inside is just different, which allows us just to basically increase that, that aerial density and that yeah. aerial density effectively equates to, you know, higher capacity drives, but effectively the platform is still a three and a half inch platform. Um, we're just cramming the technology inside, but basically no, it shouldn't have any effect on power um and you know any other associated potential concerns cool um someone actually just raised their hand really quick and put it down in the, in the chat uh if someone has a question um there's a q a section at the bottom of the page uh, feel free to click it type in a question uh, and, and it doesn't as i said doesn't have to be related to seagate or network optics directly if it's just generally about hard drives or about um, storage and recommendations then uh Steve knows his stuff, so it's good to ask the question. Um, so a couple of other questions that came in earlier. Obviously, um, you covered the, uh, from this morning's kind of session, you covered the, uh, the exobyte, zettabyte, uh, yeah. or the, which uh, most people don't, as, as, as an analogy, people don't realize the difference between like a, a terabyte and a, a petabyte, um, because obviously we went from gigabytes to terabytes quite quickly in the data shift. And it didn't seem like it's a lot more data, but a terabyte to a petabyte, um, as a good example, uh, the difference between, uh, I saw a, 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 a thing the other day, the difference between a million seconds and a billion seconds is a million seconds is a few days, whereas a billion seconds is something like 20 years. Yeah, so exactly. To give exactly. you the idea between yeah, like, yeah. going from terabyte to petabyte. Yeah. So if you go, I mean, it's always a multiple of a thousand, right? You know, yeah. uh, you know, um, so terabyte to petabyte is a thousand, petabyte to exabyte is a thousand, exabyte to zettabyte is a thousand. Yeah, but it's just a phenomenal amount of data. It's yeah. um, it's difficult to comprehend. But yeah, it's just a huge, huge amount of data. In fact, we, you know, we, we couldn't produce the technology or the uh, the media required to store that amount of data. It's just it's just impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, I mean, like, you won't be able to do it. We obviously went from megabytes to gigabytes to terabytes in a really short space of time. Yes, right? yeah, we did. Yeah. So it seems like yeah. going petabyte, and then de uh, exabyte, and zettabyte, um, it's going to be the same kind of progression, but the difference between the <laughs> megabyte. Yeah, well, I, I, mean, I, I grew up. I, I grew up in the analog world where you know it was tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we didn't we didn't have that we didn't have that issue. It was all time lapse on uh, on on tape. But uh, yeah, we've obviously moved we've 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 moved on. But yeah, the it, the technology is just uh, well, we just can't keep up with it. It's, it's yeah. just massive. But yeah, I mean, over the next few years, um, and then then figures I, I said before, you know, the 20, 30, 40, 50 plus um, terabytes on a single drive, um, you know, that that is really the the market expectation. You know, potentially way beyond that. Um, once the technology is out there uh, and we start to refine it, um, you know, it will only it will only increase in, in capacity. Mm. Yeah, cool. Uh, so we had a question um, come in. Can you share the presentation? So, yeah, we'll um, at the end, probably next week, because uh, we'll have to burn all the videos down and everything. But we'll be putting uh, the presentations and all the YouTube videos and everything in the section on our site. 
Um, you can download the presentation, you can download the video, you can watch the video. Um, so you can share it with your team um, or direct anyone to it. If anyone wants to know about storage and get a better understanding, feel free to utilize this within your own teams as well. Um, so it's the whole idea, as I said, it's, it's all about educational side of things. So we want more and more people to watch this stuff so they can get a better understanding of uh, these technologies, how they actually yeah. work. Um, so yeah, a couple of other things. Uh, Steve mentioned the data sphere. Uh, so Seagate do something similar to us um, in the sense of they've got like more educational side of things in the data sphere and talking about new trends and, and things that are coming out. Uh, as Steve mentioned, we did a talk on that as well. Um, we were involved, we did a VSAS solutions talk. Uh, so definitely worth going to check that out as well and get signed up to any of their new uh, data sphere kind of presentations they'll be coming, running. Um, so yeah, definitely go, go and check those out. Uh, also, he mentioned the white papers that he didn't finish reading, apparently. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should do. I should do. <laughs> it's the, uh, <laughs> uh, definitely go check out the white papers. Any information that's freely available, uh, definitely worth checking out. Uh, the fact that Seagate's kind of committed to, to actually getting this information out of the market I think is really good. So um, I recommend going, jumping on the Seagate website for, uh, for the kind of data report so we can all see where data is going and what the general trends are and how, uh, how that impacts the security industry. So if anyone else has got any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, if you don't, we'll be wrapping up shortly. Um, thanks again to Steve for uh, joining this morning and this afternoon. Really good presentation. Um, I think hopefully it's uh, given a lot of food for thought for uh, our partners and anyone else that jumped on board. Um, we have two more days left of our security week. Uh, tomorrow we'll be doing an AI day, um, which will have a doctor of computer science coming to join us. So that'll be really good. He'll be kind of actually talking about the details of AI, what it actually is, because everybody likes talking about AI, but um, it's kind of a bit of a mystery for a lot of people. They just like to say buzzwords. Um, so he'll be telling us about inference engines, you know, business logic, and all that kind of comes together uh, to create an AI platform. And what's actually realistic versus what's kind of like people's thought process rather than what's actually on the market. Um, so we'll have to come to that. And then uh, on Friday, we have, as I like to say, the best presentation because it'll be done by me. <laughs> so um, we'll, be, we'll be taking all the, all the week's um, presentations and knowledge and putting them into a single um, how to design modern IP video surveillance system. So talking about how we, uh, we look for the storage architecture, the hardware architecture, what the camera and bring it all together with AI to, to basically deliver our expectations and kind of our, like I said, our third, our third core principle, their extensibility to, to bring all this together to make a, a system for the customer. So on that note, I'll hand it back to Steve to uh, say anything he wants to say finally, and then uh, we'll jump off and um, feel free to reach out to myself or Steve um, if you've got any questions about anything that was discussed today. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, James. Yeah, so let me, well, let me just finish just very quickly. I just wanted to uh, thank James and the Network Optics team for, for inviting us. Uh, I know we work very closely on these types of events, uh, but, you know, we are real technology partners. Um, and we, you know, I think we've really got a strong story to tell as a partnership in the video surveillance market. So, uh, anybody wants any further information, again, please visit the Seagate website. Uh, if you want to contact me personally, you can uh, find my details on, on LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, I just want to thank you. And if there's any questions, uh, please, you know, please send it through through to James. I'm sure it will come through to, to me eventually. But again, um, you know, if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, please do so. So yeah, thanks again. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. And hopefully I'll see you uh, later in the week. Cheers, Steve. Thanks, James. Take care.